Joining me here in the studio is the former Observer journalist turned podcaster Ollie Mann. Morning to you, sir. Hello. Do we need local newspapers in the year 2009? Well, it depends who we is, doesn't it? Who we are. We are, even. Um, yeah. because... I'm not going to read your stuff online. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Grammar goes out the window when you're doing a podcast. Um, it depends who we are because I think you know, it, for an elderly audience who perhaps moved to a community themselves, who grew up in that community, who grew up at a time when community was very important, um, and who, frankly, not to be too blunt about it, are interested in reading the obituaries to see who's died, um, local newspapers play a role. Those people aren't using the internet, um, and they still enjoy their local newspapers. Or the listings, or, you know, a car for sale, or a pram, or, or whatever, all the... All the the sort of things aside from news that local papers do. Yeah, well, you see, there I'd have to disagree. I, I, they may be enjoying it, but what they might not be realising is that all of those details are completely uncurrent and out of date. I mean, that's the issue, isn't it? For everyone else, for everyone who isn't a senior citizen uh, reading the local newspaper, that, those are advertisements that are a week old. Um, you know, you can get classified listings for property and for cars uh, and for do you want to be in my band online, and you can get them answered within a day. So why are you reading them in a newspaper? at all. It seems completely outmoded and I don't think it's entirely fair just to say well the advertising has moved online because it has. It's also that the content of local newspapers has never really done anything for young people. I mean I'm 27, I, I literally have never read an article in a local newspaper that I've been interested in and you know I'm not that young. There are people who are 17 but, uh, but, who would but struggle what, to even name a local is newspaper. Is it not fair to say that, that local newspapers have a very proud tradition of exposing corruption in local politics and local business and so on and that's not something that your podcast or, or, or online stuff is going to replicate? I disagree that it is certainly not something that my podcast is going to replicate. If we did any investigative uh, reporting, I'd be very impressed. Um, but I think it is something that there is a home for online. They're ahead of us in the US on this, um, both in online consumption and, unfortunately, in the closure of regional newspapers. Um, and over there, the Huffington Post, a blog, uh, has just announced a $1.75 million bursary for investigative journalism. Um, it's going to completely change the way journalism is reported. Uh, the scoop isn't going to be exclusive to the blog. It's going to be made exclusive, well, not exclusive. It's going to be made open to everyone, open source to report. So it's a completely different way of thinking to writing for a local newspaper, being very protective of your scoop, using your scoop to get a job on a national newspaper and then perhaps going to broadcasting or whatever it is. It's a completely different system to that. But it's not worse. It's just different. At, at the heart of your argument, though, is it, it, there's a bit of ageism there, really, isn't there? Well, I mean, I you're can just see... saying, uh, because it doesn't appeal to you, the local paper and the headlines and the yeah. stories inside it, you, you just write it off. Well, but when I say young people, I really mean the under-60s. I mean, I just think local newspapers had a monopoly. They had an opportunity to really appeal to people other than their absolute stable, die-hard readership. Yeah, well, and okay, they didn't take okay. it. Uh, you know, what about the, the father in his early 40s, like me, for instance, who, <laughs> just to pick whose, an example whose son, <laughs> my son isn't old enough to play in the local football team, but w whatever, you know, and there's the, his photo on the back page, you know, these kinds of things mm -hmm. which have great local interests. Of course it does. And I think that the papers, the brands that have great history and provenance will continue to exist. Of course they will. And the ultra-local stuff as well, by the way, the parish news letter. If you live in a village with a church and a school and a pub, people will pay £2 a week to read a folded bit of A4 and, and for that reason. And that's great. I'm not saying that's wrong. But I'm saying where newspapers are failing, where local newspapers are failing, where they haven't had an audience, they haven't embraced the internet, I'm not saying good riddance. It's terrible that people are going to lose their jobs and I don't know where investigative journalism is always going to come from. But it is inevitable, so why are people surprised?